Hi there. Now I'm going to be talking about the um, conditions under which least squares estimators are actually a, a, a good thing to use. Or actually, I'm not going to explicitly talk about the conditions. I'm going to talk about what it actually means for least squared estimators to be good. So first of all, I mean, this, this seems like quite a general statement to say least squared estimators are good. But what, what do we mean by that? Well, it means that I've got some sort of population and we spoke about how there might be some sort of underlying process in the population which connects wages with um, the number of years of education. And the population parameters alpha p and beta p um, tell me things about the, well, tell us things about what the average wage would, uh, which we would expect an individual to have if they had, let's say, 10 years of education. And the problem with which we face in econometrics is that we don't typically have the entire population's worth of data. We only have a sample. And we are trying to use some sort of tools on that sample, so some mathematical functions, to make inferences about what is going on in the population. So specifically, we are trying to sort of come up with estimates of alpha p and beta p, which I call alpha s and beta s, from some sort of method which we apply to the sample. So that, that just have that at the back of your mind when we're, that, that's our ultimate goal for using some sort of estimator. Um, but first of all, what does it actually mean for an estimator to be good? Well, we spoke about this before. So we have some sort of population and we take repeated samples from that population. So let's call this one S1, S2, all the way up to Sn, where I take a lot of different samples from uh, a given population. And then I apply some sort of mathematical function to each of those samples, and I can then um, basically do a plot of the values which are my mathematical functions output for estimates of the population parameters. So let's say this is a frequency um, distribution which is outputted from our least squared estimator beta hat. And we spoke about how one thing that we quite like our estimate, one property we'd like our estimator to have is that on average, if we apply our estimator to one of these samples, it actually gets it right. So it, in other words, our frequency distribution is centered around the true population parameter beta p. And this property we called um, being unbiased. Yeah, so our estimator would be unbiased if that was the case. So that's definitely a property we would like our estimator to have because that means that most of the time we are estimating our population parameter quite well. Another property which we would like our estimator to have is that basically as I increase my sample size, my distribution, my frequency distribution, gets closer and closer to the population value. So in this example, the sort of outer frequency distribution could be n equals to 100. The inner one might be n equals to 1,000. And we can think about if we were to arbitrarily increase the sample size closer and closer to um, the population size, then we would hope to get beta p um, every time. And this is basically a property which we call consistency of estimators, which means that if I increase the sample size, I get closer to the true population value more frequently. The last property which we're going to discuss now is um, something which we call efficiency of estimators. And I'm going to illustrate this by showing two different estimators. So let's assume that both of these estimators are unbiased. So both of their frequency distributions are distributed around the uh, true population value. I should probably draw the second one a little bit steeper at the top there. Um, and let's call this one, let's call the outer one beta tilde and the inner one beta hat. We say that beta hat is more efficient than beta tilde because it gets closer to the true population parameter beta p more of the time than beta tilde does because beta tilde actually has a wider sampling distribution than beta hat does. And in this context, we would say that beta hat is more efficient than beta tilde. 
So just in summing up, these are three properties which we would like any sort of estimator, any technique which we apply to sample data to have. And it actually turns out that under a set of conditions, which we call the Gauss Markov conditions or Gauss Markov assumptions after the mathematicians Carl Friedrich Gauss and Andrei Markov, and least squares estimators are actually something which we refer to as blue. And I'm gonna just explain what this means. The B here means that they are the best estimators. So that's got to do with efficiency. The lin L stands for linear. So they're the best linear estimators. Okay, so what, what else do we need? The U stands for unbiased. So, oh, and the E here just stands for estimators. So under these assumptions, the Gauss Markov assumptions, least squares estimators are the best linear unbiased estimators. The best means that there are no other unbiased estimators which are more efficient than least squared estimators. Um, and also they are consistent even though it's sort of not mentioned in this um, mnemonic here. But this note that estimators being blue is a property which we, we really like. That means that there are no other linear estimators which we can apply to our samples which give us good or unbiased estimates of the population parameters. There are no more efficient estimators to do that. So this is a really, really important thing. And under a set of conditions, these assumptions, least squared estimators, which are a relatively simple set of tools to use, can actually fulfill this. So that's a really, really important thing in the field of econometrics. And basically econometrics is concerned with what happens when one of these assumptions fails and, and what should we do about that? Anyway, we're going to talk about that in future videos, but I just wanted to make the point that least squared estimators under a set of conditions turn out to be a really, really good tool to use to make inferences about the population.